Hi everyone, it's Miriam and welcome back to my channel, or welcome if this is your first time joining me. I hope you'll have a good time. Um, this video is going to be the long time in the making studio makeover and tour. I'm really sorry for continuously teasing it every week and saying, oh, I'll upload it this weekend and actually never doing it. Um, that's partly because the video itself uh, was massive, there was a lot of footage I needed to to film and edit and so it took me a while to put together, longer than I was expecting and it's also partly because I've been going through a bit of a bat with burnout and so a lot of things have been taking me a lot longer to do than usual just because I've been in a weird state of mind. But um, hopefully, here it is, if you're watching this it um, probably means that I've finally uploaded the video and uh, hopefully you'll like it. So I'll start off with the makeover part of the video and once the makeover is over I'll walk you through my studio, do a little studio tour, show you where I work, how I organise things and that kind of thing. I'll have a timestamp in the description if you want to skip straight to the studio tour part if you're not interested in the makeover. I also recorded an extra Patreon video in which I walk you through all the weird things in my studio that I've collected over the years, show you some old sketches, that kind of thing. So if you're interested in seeing the quirkier side of my studio, you can head over to Patreon and I have a video available to all my patrons on there. Okay, so let's jump straight into the makeover part of the video. So the reason I wanted to kind of revamp my studio was because um, I moved to a new flat back in August and because I wanted to get my stuff set up as quickly as possible so I could start working, I just kind of chucked everything I had in the studio and didn't really try to arrange it in a particularly efficient way or in a particularly pleasant way to be in. So it's been a few months and I've started to feel the toll of it being quite cramped and quite messy and it's kind of organized chaos because I still need to know where to find things. But generally I didn't really think of optimizing things of having the right kind of furniture to store everything. Um, and it just became a little bit too much and a bit overwhelming. So I needed a change. I needed things to feel fresher and lighter and brighter and more organized. And the first thing I really wanted to replace was my god awful file cabinet, which you can see in the upper right hand corner here. It was the heaviest piece of furniture ever. Moving it into my studio was really dramatic and difficult <laughs> and I don't need something that big so I bought a much smaller much much lighter one and I transferred everything I could to it and then just donated the big one and then while I was waiting for the furniture that I bought to arrive I had to get rid of a bunch of stuff and just get things organized I managed to get rid of a lot of the big items I really wanted to get out of the way so for example this big fat max stanley toolbox it's a great toolbox but it was really in the way and most of the things in it I didn't actually need. So I just bought these big transparent boxes and stored everything that I want to keep but don't use very often and don't need regular access to in them and it just went under a desk out of my way, out of my mind and just being able to take that big toolbox out of my studio already made things feel a lot better. Next, I wanted to take advantage of the vertical space in my studio. So I bought some wire shelves. They were a lot better quality than I was expecting. Although I probably wouldn't say I trust them to support a lot of weight, but they were still a good surprise. And if you're wondering, I used wire shelves because I wanted block shelves that I could arrange in any pattern that I needed. And I also wanted shelves that didn't feel too bulky or like they took up too much space. And those shelves were very airy and just let a lot of light through, which is something that I was really, really trying to do in my rearrangement. And then one of the things I was most looking forward to rearranging were all my packaging supplies. I'd been gathering more and more of them as my business has been growing and it's just gone a little bit out of hand. I was stocking them underneath that table, um, kind of expecting myself to find a solution in the near future and it was just becoming a little bit overwhelming. I was a little bit 
kind of getting more and more anxious about my storage system it wasn't very organized so I just really wanted to go through everything and sort it out throw away what I needed to and then I bought specific furniture that you'll see later in which I organized everything by type and now I feel a lot happier about it so now is probably a good time to tell you that I'm probably a little bit of a hoarder. I think it's probably the bane of a lot of creative, crafty people. That thing where you find things that just look like they have potential and you think to yourselves, oh, I'll probably do something with this one day, or I might want something like this in the future, and you don't really know what for yet, but you know you probably will. Um, and so I have a lot of drawers with a lot of knickknacks and little boxes in which I've classified all the little different knickknacks I do have. And um, yeah, I needed to organize all of that. <laughs> so that was fun. And I spent quite a long time on the floor just throwing away as much as I possibly could and trying to think of a way of organizing them um, in my future studio space. And then it was finally time for the main piece of furniture I needed to get and I went to Ikea and bought the cheapest, biggest set of drawers I could find. I was a bit silly and didn't really think about the fact that I might not be able to carry the flat pack piece of furniture. I did manage to get into my car but then trying to get it up three flights of stairs to the flat was a little bit challenging so I had to dismantle the whole package in my car and then I assembled it wrong because obviously I would. Um, that couldn't go that smoothly could it? Um, but once I finally got it together my camera died. But after a lot of panting I managed to get it into my studio and after all that I finally got all the furniture I ordered. I ordered a bunch of stuff on Amazon and eBay. Um, it was all cheap, I warn you now, none of it looks particularly amazing because I don't have a lot of money <laughs> but um, it all serves its purpose I suppose. As you can see here, assembling anything seems to be a challenge for me. So I tried this one for quite a while. Um, it was a lot of head scratching and just me going, what the hell have I gotten myself into? I tried hot gluing it together. Um, I tried thinking about maybe nailing it together. Um, I'll be honest. In the end, I just bought a massive tub of super glue and just super glued it all and kind of gave myself a headache with all the fumes because that was a great idea. But hey, it worked. And I basically had to do that with pretty much everything I bought. It was all a bit of a headache assembling everything and I felt considerably dumber than I thought myself to be, I'll be fully honest. But hey, in the end, it all turned out okay. Kind of. Some of the things a little bit wonky. But hey, they hold the things I want them to hold. So all is good. The main thing I was happy about were those A3 trays that you see me assemble right here. Uh, I found them really, really difficult to find because I couldn't find any A3 trays anywhere. I found them on eBay in the end, they were about a fiver per tray and they stack really nicely, they don't really budge and they're strong enough to have my printer on the top and the rest of the supplies underneath. So I'm really, really happy with this purchase and as always if you're interested in checking them out I'll have a link in the description. And I'll spare you the montage video for these set of drawers because they were an absolute nightmare and are probably very very boring to watch, but hey, they worked in the end. And then one other thing I was really excited to try out was fixing my desk. It's a desk that I got for free and it's got a slight texture on the surface and because I've used it for a couple of years now it's quite grubby and any ink or paint I use uh, kind of seeps into the texture and no matter how much I scrub it, it doesn't really become white again so it just looks a little bit grubby and I wanted it to look a little bit nicer to the eye and just generally in my room it would be nice to have a nicer surface to work on. So I got this contact paper which is basically adhesive paper and it has a fairly realistic wood texture on there. I've seen quite a few YouTubers use that kind of thing and I just thought I'd give it a go and I'm quite happy with it. I didn't white by enough to cover the entire desk but oh well <laughs> um once my my computer is on there you can't really notice that anyway um so yeah happy
And then last but not least, I had to have a few decorative things. So I don't tend to decorate places very much. Um, I don't tend to have a lot of things to decorate anything with. But I did want to at least add a few plants in there, even if it's very probable they'll die very quickly. And I also wanted to add a few personal items that I love and mean something to me. And then it was all done. I am so genuinely happy with how the space is now. Um, please forgive the very ugly shot of my bin in the corner. I completely forgot that it was there. Please imagine nights full of puppies and forgive the breach in aesthetic. I did spend about £300 on this makeover, I'd say. Um, it's a lot of money for me and it stressed the hell out of me for a while. But in the end, I think it was a really great move because I feel mentally so much happier in that space that I think it was worth me taking the time and the money to take care of uh, myself in that way. So now it's time to show you around. And if you would like to see all the quirky things that I keep in my studio that I don't mention in this studio at all, you can head over to my Patreon. I have a special video in which I just show you all the creepy and fun things that I have. It's accessible to all my patrons starting at the $1 tier. As always, the link is in the description below. Hey guys, so I'm going to be walking you through my studio, I'm going to be hand holding the camera for a bit, I'm going to have shots where it's not handheld so that it's not as shaky and stuff, but I will be using the inbuilt mic with my camera um, instead of my external mic for this because I'll be walking around so I can't have my external mic plugged in, so I'm sorry if the sound quality isn't quite as good. So we're going to start with this corner of the room where I put up some shelves and I'll jump straight in. So although those shelves are better quality than I was expecting them to be, I wouldn't say I completely trust them. Um, <laughs> so I decided to put all the heavy stuff at the bottom, especially the heavy things that I don't have to take out very often so that I wouldn't have to jostle the shelves too much. Um, so this bottom one here contains all the artwork I have done since 2010 probably, something like that. I used to draw a lot on individual loose sheets of paper and then I started using sketchbooks a little bit later on. Um, so a lot of these books it just contain um, just individual sheets of paper with sketches on them. And then this other bottom shelf here contains all my airbrushing supplies apart from my air compressors. So I had a lot of airbrushes and various supplies when I did prosthetic makeup and um, they are also probably transferable to fine art so I definitely kept all of that because I would really like to be able to airbrush sculptures in the future. So that's where all that is and this is probably the most fascinating part of my entire studio and it's a file full of tax forms. Yay! So next up is this shelf which is kind of related to the one below it and it has all my completed sketchbooks. So these actually probably go back to 2016 I'd say whereas all the sketches that you can see beneath are probably between 2010 and 2013. These are 2016 to now because I had a big um, lull in time where I stopped drawing as much. That's because I was focusing on my makeup career and I didn't really have the time to draw. So I picked up a sketchbook again properly probably towards the middle of 2016 or thereabouts. So these are all the sketchbooks that I completed since then and uh, most of them are 2017-2018.
And then I have a bunch of miscellaneous shelves uh, <laughs> uh, because there's a bunch of stuff that I don't know where to put. So this is more taxes. And these are actually um, damaged a 2018 and 2017 sketchbooks. Um, so for example, if you see here, this one was completely misprinted, um, completely wonky. So I obviously didn't sell it. Thankfully, the printer I use is really, really wonderful. And when I told them about the problems, they obviously replaced all the damaged booklets in no time. So that all ended well. But I don't really want to throw away those. I quite like when things are kind of weirdly printed and stuff. I can't sell them, but I do. I find them quite quirky. So I don't want to throw them away or anything. I might do projects with them in the future. Next up we have a shelf on which I put basically my virgin painting surfaces, so things that I could use in the future still, like canvas boards, um, big sheets of paper, coloured paper, that kind of thing, things that I can plan on painting on in the future. This one is another miscellaneous shelf, except it's more aimed at art supplies. So this is a little folder with a variety of different papers in it, archived by category. So there's white papers, cardboard, coloured papers, pattern papers, that kind of thing. And these are various packaging supplies. Just above it, we have the shelf where I keep my notebooks. So a lot of them are blank because I get gifted notebooks a lot, which is fine by me. I do love them, although I never quite know what to put in them. I have started every so often journaling, but it's difficult for me to keep it up. And um, this is my dream journal, which I haven't used in absolutely years, that kind of thing. And contrary to what you may think, I didn't actually buy this dome for the for this purpose. I wasn't intending on it being a decorative item. I want to create a sculpture that I can put inside of it in the future. I uh, haven't gotten around to doing that obviously, so for the time being it's just going to serve as a little decorative piece. And the last shelf on this row is where I keep all my blank sketchbooks. I have a lot of them because that's probably the number one gift I get generally. And also my number one compulsion buy. So whenever I go to an art store, I probably come out with a sketchbook. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. I have to show you these. These are my favorite sketchbooks. Um, they were given to me by um, a Netsy shop called Sketchbook Co. And they are literally the most wonderful sketchbooks she buys old books as you can see and she reuses the covers and fills the inside with art paper so it can either be a regular sketchbook or these ones are watercolor sketchbooks and they are beautiful absolutely fantastic plus the person who makes those sketchbooks is also amazing at art and basically a really lovely person and I can't wait to fill them up and show them to you in earnest and do a tour of them and everything um, I love them so so much you may have noticed that I built those wire shelves as kind of steps. So instead of doing a block, I could have done a block, I had enough cubes. Um, but instead I just did little shelves because I wanted to be able to put up my heads, mannequin heads, and a little plant in the middle. So I have two mannequin heads, one here and one right at the top. Um, I both got them through different art projects a few years back and I didn't really want to throw them away because I just really like them, especially the one at the top. Um, she's really vintage and really beautiful. She has really long lashes and just looks really snotty and snobby and I love her. So she definitely is staying in my studio. And then I put a little plant up there because um, I fell in love with it when I went to Ikea and I think I really need plants in here and I might get a few more but I'm always worried that I'm going to kill them because I'm not very good with taking care of plants so yeah back to the shelves this shelf is for packaging supplies mostly taxes that need to be filed yay fun times and paper and then the one next to that is probably my most useful shelf it has the sketchbooks that I'm currently using so this is a 
practice life drawing sketchbook for example this is where I do my portraits um, and these are the notebooks I use the most so stuff like taxes YouTube videos that kind of thing so this is the shelf I go to when I want to grab something that I use quite often and the last shelf above there is where I store supplies for my printers these are all the inks for my fine art printer and the bulbs for my studio lights behind there this corner has large pieces of cardboard I think this at the top is a kind of frame this is a board I use to stretch my watercolour paper and this is a sculpture I've had on the go for probably a couple of years now that I would really like to finish at some point but for the moment it will just stay there and creepily watch me while I work in the corner here I have the small file cabinet that I bought to replace my massively heavy other one I'm so glad I got rid of that big one um, and I actually went to a school for autistic boys which was quite cool I really like um, the fact that you can give away stuff for free on the internet and then it goes to people who really need it um, it was really great so anyway um, in there I stored all files, <laughs> really interesting admin and stuff in there and then on top of that I have papers as is very handy labelled right there. Um, papers of all sorts, so not only drawing and art papers. I have a lot of different pa printing papers before I started doing prints at home I ordered a lot of sample packs from a variety of different brands and companies so I could determine exactly what papers would be best suited to my to my art prints and I kept them all so that I can refer to them if I ever need any new papers or if there's any promotions and I wonder what the paper is like and if it's worth buying that kind of thing I have a lot of labels and these are art papers uh, and a variety of things and they're usually the ones that just fit in here and the ones that didn't just went on the shelves Above here, the box that is literally propping up my shelves <laughs> is obviously one that I don't need to reach at any point. It contains mailing tubes which I bought a few months back thinking that it would be a good way to ship my large prints but I just really don't like rolling up prints so I decided to stop using them but I don't want to throw them away because I'm sure I'll find a way to use them in the future. And then squeezed between the wall and the shelves here are my large scale supplies. So these are boards that I use to ship um, my original art. This is a massive box with my fine art printing paper, which I buy in A2 sheets because it's cheaper to buy them in bulk like that and then cut them down myself. And this is all my envelopes for my large prints. Okay, so now let's move on to this corner of the room. I'll start by talking about what's on top of the drawers here and then I'll talk a little bit more about what's inside the drawer after that. So in between the wall and the drawers here I stuffed a bunch of packaging supplies that I don't use quite as often. I like to recycle things when I receive them so a lot of the bubble wrap that I have is just stuff that came with things I purchased and I like to just keep it. I don't really want to throw it away again because I need it every so often so it's good to just have a supply of it. Um, this is my boyfriend's toolbox. This is my toolbox, which you saw me fill up with all my most used tools. This is the box for my external mic, which I use when I travel and I want to take my mic with me. And these are a couple of frames that I'll be using to frame two of my paintings that will be exhibited in a show later next week. This is a board I use to stretch some watercolour paper and I actually think it does have a sheet of paper on there that I still am yet to paint on. Um, this is my light box, which I use to transfer sketches onto final paper if the final paper is thin enough to let the light through. And these two folders have a variety of things. This one is mostly preliminary sketches and final sketches that I did for finished paintings. Um, I don't really like to throw away anything artwork related, so I store old drawings in here. And this one has prints that I misprinted, didn't print properly, or that I printed by mistake and now have extra of, um, and I store them all in here. This is my laptop, 
my trusty little HP laptop that lasted me probably five or six years on which I used to do all my video and editing and everything still works um, but it does have some problems so I don't use it very much anymore except when I travel this is a box that I'll need to upgrade at some point because it has loads of treasures um, well my version of treasures I suppose so mostly stones and shells and just things that I think are really pretty that I found and then you've seen me build those guys these A3 document holders I put most of my A3 supplies on there so I have some cutting boards at the bottom the tissue paper that I used to package my booklets with here the backing boards for my A3 prints my 11 by 14 prints should I say um, the cello bags that I put my 11 by 14 prints in and this is a tray with my fine art printing paper so all the paper I print my prints on is in here and then just above here is my black and white printer this was a printer that was given to me by a friend she was moving out of her flat and she didn't want to carry this with her so she asked me if I wanted it to which I enthusiastically said yes because it's a really brilliant printer it prints really really fast and the singular cartridges that you get with it last you a while and once it runs out it's really really cheap um, and I really love it it's a really really convenient little printer I print all my address labels and paperwork and that kind of thing on it and then right next to it is its big sister which is my fine art printer which is a Canon Pro 100S it's a really brilliant printer and I'm sure other artists that you watch use it too um, because it's just such a high quality printer um, it's a bit pricey and I had to invest in it at the beginning of the year but it was such a great decision and I, I really really love it. It's fantastic and I couldn't recommend it more if you're planning on doing prints at home. Okay so now let's jump into what's inside of those drawers. I won't go into too much detail because that will get boring very very fast. If you do want to know a little bit more information about this I'll be talking more in depth about the contents of these drawers in the Patreon video tour. So this first drawer here has most of my stationery, I would say. So a lot of it is highlighters. I don't know why I have so many highlighters, but for some reason I have more highlighters than probably anything else. <laughs> I have a bunch of tapes too for some strange reason, but hey, um, there you go. So the second drawer is probably even more fascinating than stationery and um, that's all my empty containers. Amazing! Um, and basically I don't really like throwing away things that could be useful and that probably dates back to when I was a prosthetic makeup artist because we needed small containers for pretty much anything all the time so I just got into a habit of keeping things and um, I haven't stopped because turns out it's actually really useful to have tons of little pots when you paint and things so yeah mixing containers all that kind of thing I just have a dedicated drawer to it how fascinating is that? And then the bottom drawer here has all my sharp things. <laughs> so it has basically the tools I use the most. So it has my drill, heat gun, um, that kind of thing. It has all my, my bits and bobs that go with the drills and the tools. It has um, a bunch of torture equipment. I'm just kidding obviously, this is also part of my prosthetic makeup kit when we needed a lot of different scissors and forceps and that kind of thing and they're all really useful little things so I just keep them in this drawer. Here you go. The second part of the chest of drawers is probably the artsy bit, so it contains most of my art supplies with the first drawer containing most of my drawing supplies, so it has all my pencils and fine liners um, and generally everything I need to get sketching. The drawer under there has lesser used art supplies, so anything that I want to keep because I think has potential, but that I don't use quite as often. So special effects inks, that kind of thing, um, glues, varnishes that I don't use very often, that type of thing, salt for my watercolours. Um, so these are all things that I use every so often, but not quite as often as the first drawer. 
And then the last drawer is the one where I store all my weird items. So this is all for crafting elements. It's for mostly all the stuff I use when I make jewellery and various thing things that I collected over the years that I just think have potential and that I'd quite like to use in future projects. Like, um, rocks. <laughs> Just things that I think are quite cool and that I can't really get myself to throw away because I'm a little bit of a hoarder. So that's it for this chest of jewels and what's on top of it. Um, and now I'll move to the other side of the room. So I currently have these two paintings here because I'm in the process of framing them for the show next week. Um, so this is Cherish, which you may have seen me paint on my channel, and I also have Phosphines here, uh, which is probably my biggest painting to date, which is also on my channel, if you would like to watch that. So let me get those out of the way, and I'll move on to talking about this corner of the room. So this part of the room is where I decided to store a lot of my packaging supplies, which you saw uh, being stuffed under a table in my previous studio arrangement um, now I try to organize them in their own corner so the bottom here the boxes that you see underneath here and the boxes in the corner here are surplus packaging supplies and the stock I currently use is on the top of the chest of drawers so I have A4 packaging supplies here this box has um, backing boards and A4 envelopes in there I have these little drawers that you saw me struggle to build quite a lot <laughs> with uh, all my cello bags, my stickers, my thank you cards, um, all that kind of thing. And this is where I store uh, address labels, uh, return addresses, that kind of thing, anything that needs to go on the envelopes when I send orders out. I also have a small tray here with small envelopes um, and postcard envelopes. And this here is where I store my business cards and a variety of different labels. So tracked and signed labels, it's where I store my stamp with my logo on it and all my do not bend stickers, that sort of thing. This chest of drawers underneath is something I upcycled. I found it in a dump and I decided it looked really cute and I'd quite like to have it. Um, and a lot of the furniture I actually have in this room is a, a lot of upcycling. So um, this is something I got for free. Uh, the desk I work on right there is something I got for free, that kind of thing. Um, so, so let me show you what's inside. Okay, so we've now seen most of the storage portion of my studio, so now we can move on to the area where I work. So let's start with this side first. Right here I store uh, the big sheets of watercolour paper I used for big paintings and a table easel. Underneath this table I have this massive box with all the tools that I rarely use but don't really want to get rid of. You saw me fill that box in the makeover part of this video. And this box has all craft supplies that I use a lot less than the ones that were in that bottom drawer here. And these two boxes over there also contain craft supplies with this one containing a lot of miscellaneous craft supplies and this one containing a lot of prosthetic makeup related supplies like um, silicon that we use to make prosthetics and that kind of thing that I hope to use again someday. And then I've set up this table here to be my cutting station slash packaging station. So this is where I set up when I have to cut prints, when I have to package orders, that kind of thing. So you can see that I've got a few things already on there that I'm getting ready. So these are all the orders I got this week. And there's a variety of them. So there's some sticker packs going out um, and some prints and a variety of different patron things that I need to get ready and I need to get to doing that as soon as I finish this video. 
I added a little lamp to the corner here helps me see what I'm doing a bit better and it also makes the things look a little bit warmer and more welcoming and then I got something really cool recently let me show you um, I indulge in getting a stamp of my logo done so this is a stamp to do wax seals it's a lot bigger than I was expecting and um, it works really well and I'm really happy with it and so I think I'm gonna do a bunch of these wax seals and then I'll use them to package Patreon rewards next month. Next I have my easel set up right here and like my black and white printer it was actually a gift from a friend, same friend, who um, was again moving the same flat <laughs> and didn't want to carry a thing that she then actually used as often as she was hoping so she asked me if I wanted to which I very 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 happily said yes and I can't thank her enough for giving it to me because it's just amazing and I don't really think I could have been able to afford it on my own. So the bottom shelf has most of my fixatives and sprays and varnishes and uh, various liquids that I use. Uh, it has a lot of my brushes with that big pot being the brushes I use the least and the brushes I use the most being in smaller pots on top of my working station and I have a bunch of different work in progress set up um, at the easel at the moment. I then have a little stool that I use to film videos and sit down when I'm working at the easel, that kind of thing. And again, it's something that I upcycled. I found it in the street and decided it would be very handy. Same thing for this metal tray. I found it in the street once again, cleaned it up, and it turns out it's really, really useful to use in this studio. And I have my airbrush compressors at the bottom here. Um, and I have some sculpting supplies in the middle here. So this box has all my sculpting tools, which actually look a little bit crazy right now because I really need to organize them. And it has a lot of Lazy Susans and turntables for when I sculpt. And the top here, because it's right next to my easel right here, is where I put my painting supplies when I'm doing a painting. So it has my most used brushes in those two cups here, uh, my water spray, my water pots, there's a watercolor palette right here, and these are watercolor pencils. And then the windowsill is where I kind of wanted to put a few more decorative elements. So the two sculptures that you see in the corner here I've had for years. Uh, the smaller one I actually got on my very first job as a prosthetic makeup artist. So they both have kind of a sentimental value. The plant here is a jasmine. Um, at the time of me filming this video, the flowers have all died now. But it was beautiful a couple of days ago. <laughs> um, now it just looks a bit miserable. Uh, <laughs> but um, it's still living, which I'd say is an improvement on my track record, I'll be honest. And then this little basket here has loads of origami birds that I did when I was in school. It was a really good way of keeping the stress out of my head and just, um, it helped me focus on lessons actually. So I really like how colourful it looks so I just put it here as a decor decorative element. I'm struggling to speak at this point in the video. Sorry guys. And then this little wike I made with a 3D pen that my boyfriend got me as a gift. And then more brushes, because no one ever has enough brushes. And then my most useful art books. So books that I refer to quite regularly when I work. This corner here is where I keep my scanner. I also store finished paintings in the folder at the bottom here. And the plastic container next to it is what I use to soak my watercolour paper when I want to stretch it. And then I keep uh, flyers and brochures of the things and events that I find interesting on the board just there. And then I have a mirror for no reason at all. And this little table here, again, is one I found in the street. Okay, so let's move on to my desk now. So underneath there, you can see my computer, my hard drives, all the mess of cables that will never go away. I keep some extra studio lights in the corner over there and I also have 
a, an IKEA tray here in which I keep the paints I use the most. This drawer here is where I keep all my gouache. So this is the palette that you see in most of my old gouache videos. I have a bunch more palettes underneath, all my tubes, that kind of thing, so that they're easy access whenever I want to start painting. The one below is for all my watercolours, so once again, um, palettes and tubes and that type of thing. And then the one underneath has my Wacom tablet that I use whenever I need to do some digital retouching. It's a bit old, it's my brother's. Um, he gave it to me when he moved away, but it does the job for the minimal amount of digital tweaking that I require it to do. And finally, the last drawer has all the electronics that I use the most. So it has um, a hairdryer for when I paint, the cable I use to plug my camera into the mains to avoid having to use the battery, I have a, a camera for when I twitch, which I haven't done in a very long time, all that sort of thing. So this is an organised chaos. Um, I know that if I'm looking for something that I use a lot, it's in there. And then my chair, once again, was upcycled. I got it for free from someone who was getting rid of it. And it has my trusty electric blanket on there because I don't have the heating on very often because that is expensive. So that's what's keeping me warm most of the time. And then I have my external mic for recording voiceovers for my videos over there, my monitor, and I have a little tray with a lot of all the pencils and supplies that I use the most underneath there, cup of tea and glass of water because I don't know who ever survives without those. My bullet journal, which I am thoroughly enjoying at the moment, it's actually turning out to be really, really useful to my business. The sketchbook that I'm currently using the most. And then I have some daylight lamps above my desk here. And then something I like to keep on my desk quite a lot is my desk easel which this one is a small version of the one I talked about earlier in the video and it's the one I use the most when I sketch or paint at the moment. And unfortunately since I rent we can't put a lot of things on the walls, we don't really want to risk our deposit and uh, just for the sake of decoration so I try to avoid putting too much on the walls but I did want to put a couple of things so I put, so I put this map of uh, Middle Earth in the Lord of the Rings that was given to me by the person who made those beautiful sketchbooks I showed you earlier in the video. Um, I just thought it was beautiful and I quite like to get a frame for it at some point. For the time being, it's up there. And then I also put up one of my Emmys. As some of you may know, I used to be a prosthetic makeup artist and one of my main jobs was Game of Friends. And the team I was part of won a couple of Emmys and um, so I have one of them framed up there. So there you go. This is it for this makeover slash studio tour video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm really, really happy with how my studio came out. I wasn't entirely sure that it was gonna make much of a difference, but actually I think it really, really did. And um, I'm overall really, really pleased and the space is just so much nicer to work in. It has so much more light. I was always a bit reluctant to get plants because I'm not very good at taking care of them so I, was, I always get quite sad when they die um, but I'm really glad I did because they just liven up the space and I like having life around me so they're just a nice addition and um, and although I can't put a lot of things on the walls I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy I've got a couple things and so this is probably the first time I really take care of a space I have um, and really arrange it the way I want it instead of just having it as a very practical space. I'm really happy I took the time to add a few decorative elements and just generally make it a little bit more um, homely and a little bit more aesthetic. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, um, I hope you like the video. Let me know in the comments what you think, how you are, how life is going, all that kind of thing. And um, I'll see you very, very soon. Take care everyone. Bye.